Well, welcome to Sir John Soane's Museum. My name is Jerzy Kierkuć Bieliński. I'm the exhibitions curator of our current show, Diverse Maniere, Piranesi, Fantasy and Excess. The exhibition is centered around a publication by the Venetian architect and printmaker Giovanni Battista Piranesi, um, entitled Diverse Maniere d'Adornare i Camini. It sounds like a very beautiful title in Italian. Once you translate it into English, though, it's a bit prosaic. Different ways of adorning your chimney piece. Um, the book is a type of recipe, I suppose, for modern interior design and architecture. Piranesi felt there was a problem by the mid-18th century uh, in interior design, in architecture. Uh, it was getting a bit too decadent, a bit too rococo. So in this book, he proposes a new system, um, basically looking at nature, the natural world, but also looking at ancient civilizations, Etruscan, Egyptian, Greek and Roman uh, art and architecture. And he suggests that one should take the best examples of these various cultures and also natural form, and instead of slavishly emulating antiquity, combine all these elements to create new, and as he termed it, modern designs. The exhibition features full-scale realizations of designs taken from Piranesi's book. Piranesi, unfortunately, never saw his designs realized. It's through the use of 3D printing that we've only now been able to realize his extraordinary visions of classical tripods, altars, and vases, and chairs. Um, we've worked with a company called Factum Arte, who are based in Madrid. Uh, they have taken Piranesi's two-dimensional prints. Quite often, the details on these prints are very, very small, but they've taken these details and modeled them in three dimensions. These are then realized using 3D printing. Um, positives are made of the designs from which molds are then taken. And the objects are cast in the materials that would have been available to Piranesi and that are suggested by the 1769 publication. So bronze, scagliola, um, uh, and, and so on. Um, they're hand-finished, so uh, in a way this is a conflation of 18th century techniques, um, fine art and decorative art techniques, with 21st century uh, 3D printing technology. Well, this is a perfect example of Piranesi looking at nature for inspiration. Um, he's taken various natural forms. The, the body of the coffee pot is based on a seashell, but of course it's been slightly abstracted. Um, and the foot is a tortoise. Um, an actual living tortoise was scanned. Um, it wasn't harmed in the process, I hasten to add, but it was scanned to create the, the foot of the coffee pot. Um, the knob of the lid is formed of little seashells, which again have been cast in silver. This is all cast in silver, I should add. But my favorite part is the spout, which is in the form of a bee. It's an incredibly modern design, the way in which Piranesi has abstracted the form of the coffee pot, of the shell rather, the body of the coffee pot, the handle, this wouldn't look completely out of place in, on, a, on, a, on a coffee table of the 1930s. It almost has that slightly Art Deco feeling to it. This, I think, is one of the most extravagant uh, designs by Piranesi. Um, it's a sort of shell or grotto chair. Um, it wouldn't look out of place, perhaps, in a, in a garden pavilion. I don't think it's a chair for serious purposes. It's a chair for reverie, for, for um, transporting oneself out of the mundane world. It's a compilation of various natural forms. The back is shaped like a scallop shell, and it's adorned with tiny little water snails. The arms of the chair are formed of these beautifully twisted swan's necks. Um, and the feet, um, they're in the form of satyrs. So you have these satyrs masks here, and then the leg of a satyr supporting the chair. Now, Piranesi was claiming that he was trying to move away from the sort of Venetian Rococo style that he said, or he implied, was, was a bit too decadent, a bit too overripe. I think in the example of this chair, 
he can't really argue that he's moving away from the Venetian Rococo. This is a product of the Venetian Rococo. It's a highly theatrical piece. Um, it wouldn't look out of place on a stage set. And one has to remember, of course, that Prunesi initially trained as a stage designer. He worked with people such as the Bibiena family, who were very well known in Venice um, as, as designers of extravagant, quite fantastical stage, stage scenery. And I think there's a feeling of that theatricality coming out in this chair. It's certainly a piece of fantasy rather than um, serious uh, 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 archaeological neoclassical design. Well, I think this is one of my favourite pieces um, in the exhibition. Uh, it's, again, uh, based on a tiny little vignette um, on the same plate um, by Piranesi that has the coffee pot and the grotto chair. Um, it's a very small detail, um, but I think that's testament to uh, the power of Piranesi's vision as a designer that despite the fact that um, many of, of these designs are reproduced in his publication in quite, uh, as quite small uh, uh, illustrations, they can be scaled up to full size and lose none of their power or indeed coherence as unified elements of design. This is an extraordinary tripod. It's loosely based on antique uh, prototypes. Tripods would be used in religious ceremonies. They'd be used also as little occasional tables in Roman houses. But here, really, Piranesi has used the idea of an antique tripod as an excuse to create this tour de force of extraordinary uh, design. He's taking ostensibly from uh, nature, again, using natural forms, um, in order to, to uh, around which he bases this this uh, particular piece, um, but he's also looking to classical prototype. The ram's heads uh, evoke uh, the ram's heads that decorated, quite often decorated altars and other sacrificial um, objects uh, relating to. Uh, Roman religious practice, Roman and Greek religious practice. You have these wonderful festoons of laurel wreaths decorating the legs. But I think my favorite part is this extraordinary central helix um, that, that hangs like a pendant from the main body of the tripod. It doesn't have a structural function, it's purely decorative. Um, around this helix, which almost resembles DNA. I mean, obviously, Piranesi isn't anticipating um, the discovery of DNA, but it has that sort of feeling. Around this, he's wound these very beautiful and very delicate tendrils with little leaves. This is actually cast in bronze. So it's cast using the materials that would have been available to Piranesi, would have been, the materials he would have been familiar with. And then this is beautifully uh, gilt, um, incredibly fine gilding. And of course it's hand finished as well, um, which is, brings in this idea of, of artistry into, into um, the creation of these objects. They're not me purely mechanically reproduced. The bowl rests on a beautiful sliver of alabaster um, and it's absolutely exquisitely finished and detailed. 